Yeah, another set piece. So. Add that to the collection. Obviously, I'm going to wash it out. I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am finally reviewing the Batman. Or should I say finally able to see the Batman after multiple years of waiting. Fun story about the sweatshirt. I actually bought this after the first DC fandom, which was back in 2020. I forget what month. I want to say it was August, but I can't remember exactly. Anyways, over two years later, finally able to put it on. I wore it once to make sure it fit. Discovered it gets really hot really quick. But after that, I put it away and I was like, I'm waiting until the Batman comes out. So here we are. Patience, people. It's a first you. And I guess now I should probably talk about the Batman. So the Batman is yet another solo Batman movie starring Robert Pattinson, Zoe Kravitz, Jeffrey Wright, Colin Farrell. And basically it's about, oh, Paul Dano. Can't believe I forgot Paul Dano. But basically it is about the Riddler and he is killing a series of people. All of his victims are political people. They're involved in some not so great things. So now the Batman, this is year two Batman. He's gained a little bit of trust with a little bit of the police force, mostly just James Gordon. But anyways, he's intervening and he's starting to do detective work around what is going on with the Riddler and who he's killing, why he's killing them and what they all have in common, which eventually leads to a very dark side of his own family's past. I, I'm pretty sure Matt Reeves described it this way. I, if not Matt Reeves and someone else described it this way, but really the only thing that I can describe this movie as is pretty much Zodiac but with Batman. Now, I love Zodiac. Zodiac is one of the coolest mystery crime thrillers that I've ever seen. It's kind of jacked up that it's actually based on true events, but so take that and take the Batman, put those together, and well, it's it's bound to be great, and it pretty much worked out that way. This sweater is really hot. First of all, Robert Pattinson as Batman. I think we all kind of had a mini panic attack when that casting news was released, but he has done some roles in between Twilight and now. Roles that aren't all super big except for Tenet in the lighthouse so people that had seen his roles were like eh, he's you know he's not the vampire anymore you know the teenage heartthrob vampire he's an actually talented actor i had never the only role i, I didn't even see twilight to be clear but the only role that i knew him for other than for twilight was Tenet. i didn't watch the lighthouse i heard that he did great in it Tenet is all i had going on and after i saw Tenet, i was like okay Dude's a legitimate actor. As things started being released around the new Batman movie, specifically the trailers, I started growing faith in his performance. How did it pay off? Well, if you doubt him going in, you're gonna be surprised, probably. It's kind of exactly what I expected, actually. What you get out of the trailers is pretty much exactly what you get in the movies. The only downside that I have, which this isn't really an acting decision, this is more of a story decision. Did I say downside that I have? The only negative thought that I have, rather, would be how he is as Bruce Wayne, which is a much more reclusive version of Bruce. Granted, this is only year two Bruce, but it was kind of an adjustment seeing a more reclusive Bruce Wayne, not the social butterfly that we all know. But once you get over that, it really makes sense because like I said, this is year two Batman. If things were to move on, if Robert Pattinson were to continue as this character and he started becoming that more like put on a show as Bruce Wayne type character, then I'd be like, okay, it makes a lot of sense then. Or if this was a one-off and we don't get a sequel and Robert Pattinson does not continue. The fact that this is so early on in his career as Batman and he's focusing on things so much as Batman, then yeah, the reclusive Bruce Wayne, I get it. I would kind of compare this Bruce Wayne to how Bruce Wayne was in Batman Begins, the beginning of it, that is. He wasn't reclusive, he was gone, he presumed dead. It's a little bit different, but it's the same idea. Once I got over that, I was like, hey, this guy is killing it. But when he puts on the cape and the cow, I, I don't even know, it's just, it. It, 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 it did great. That's kind of how I have to leave it at. It just feels very Batman-esque. He was very intimidating. I liked how he did his voice. It was kind of, it kind of reminded me of Christian, how Christian Bale did his voice. You know, that, that deep growl, but it wasn't as intense. It didn't sound like Robert Pattinson was gonna end up with throat cancer because of doing the voice. But at the same time, it didn't sound like you were hearing Bruce Wayne. Like he was still trying to disguise his voice in some way, which is pretty cool. He just, he just kind of, lowered it like if i talked in videos like this also his fighting style that's not completely on the actor that's the choreographers but the fighting style was really cool it really gave me arkham knight vibes this whole movie gave me arkham knight vibes to be completely honest but the fighting style was just brutal and 
I'm comparing this to The Dark Knight way more than what I want to. But compared to The Dark Knight, one thing that bothered me was how Christian Bale fought, which was mostly with like his elbows. Like you would always notice him like swinging up like that. And I guess it was supposed to be like partially blocking hits, like kind of like they do in boxing. I don't know. It always just kind of looked kind of off. They don't do that in the Batman. Robert Pattinson, he's actually full-fledged fists and flying. And, and I really enjoy that. I really enjoy the brutality and violence in that fighting style and it looks just so good and it really just made you feel like if you just ran into this guy in a dark alley somewhere you would turn the other way and you would run for your life because no you've seen the way this guy fights i don't want any part of it but it also is definitely complemented by matt reeves direction his direction for this film was fantastic the cinematography was beautiful for this movie i feel like i didn't touch on the story as much as i could have specifically like the whole zodiac meets batman thing and yeah that's that's really um <laughs> That was something else. I'm really glad that we got to see a full on detective Batman and they chose the perfect villain being the Riddler, who is exactly like the Zodiac Killer in this movie. Well, not exactly like, but he really throws off those feelings of Zodiac Killer. And I really think Matt Reeves handled it absolutely beautifully. He made a really intriguing, intense mystery thriller out of it, bringing in the world's greatest detective and putting that to work putting him to work, I should say. It was just, it was a sight to see. I love mystery thriller stuff in general. So seeing that in a Batman movie with someone like the Riddler, seeing Batman and, and Gordon unravel everything, it was just, it was a heck of a lot of fun. And again, tense <laughs> and very intriguing. Speaking of Gordon, Jeffrey Wright did fantastic. Jeffrey Wright and Robert Pattinson were great together. They really made me believe that these guys actually were kind of under the table buddies. There's actually one scene in the movie I won't reveal any details. And they were, it just kind of locked in like the relationship they have. Gordon technically shouldn't be working with this guy, but he knows that Batman is on his side ultimately. I just really like how their relationship is written out and I really enjoy the acting between Jeffrey Wright and Robert Pattinson. And you guys, Zoe Kravitz, who did fantastic as Selena Kyle. Colin Farrell was completely unrecognizable as the Penguin. And Paul Dano, is it Dano or Dano? I'm not sure. I think it's Dano. You know, now I think about it, I don't think I've seen anything with him in it. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think I have. I'm sure he was in something that I saw somewhere along the line. This pretty much being the first movie that I see with Paul Dano in it, he did fantastic. He's a fantastic villain. Creeps you out. He makes you really just get tense whenever he's on screen. He did have a few moments that felt like he was doing a Heath Ledger Joker impression. That doesn't sound like an insult, but I don't know. I, I just kind of got that feeling. But ultimately, he did great. The Riddler was awesome. He was great for the role. And uh, it, like I said, whenever he was on screen, I was intimidated. <laughs> and it felt really intense. The only person in the cast that I was really questionable about from the start, and I'm still kind of trying to figure out if I enjoyed it or not, was Andy Serkis as Alfred. Now, don't get me wrong, Andy Serkis is a fantastic actor, and he's perfect for movies like this, where it's really dark and gritty. And I definitely believe that he has a role in Batman. I'm just still trying to figure out if I think that that role is Alfred, but I, I don't know. I mean, he did great as always throughout the film. And there were moments where him and Robert Pattinson really connected. I'm not saying like he's a terrible Alfred. I'm not saying that he doesn't belong as Alfred. Maybe it's just that I need to see more or need to see this again. And to go back to Matt Reeves' direction, I, I've already said it, the Arkham Knight feeling, but the Gotham City that you go through in Arkham Knight felt really similar to the Gotham City that you're taken through in the Batman. And just everything in this movie resembles Arkham Knight, in my opinion. And I really enjoy that because that game is awesome. But yeah, the, the Gotham City design and atmosphere that they went with for this movie. I really enjoyed it. The tone and atmosphere of the whole movie I enjoyed, not just the city of Gotham, but for the movie as a whole. It was very dark and grim. And Michael Giacchino's score was perfect. Even though it was released before the movie, at least the Batman theme was, I don't know about the whole score, but everyone was listening to it and gushing about how great it was. And I was like sitting in pain and silence because I was not listening to it before the movie. I, ha I have a thing about that. I don't listen to scores before I see the movie. My experience and my history with film scores have always been, I hear it and it is noticeable in the movie and it leaves such an impression and such an impression from the experience of watching that movie specifically for the first time that I just, I have to look it up on its own to hear the music that was in that film. Relive those memories of me watching the film for the first time. It's not the other way around for me. I don't want to listen to the score and be like, oh yeah, awesome music. And then go into the movie and be like, oh yeah, that awesome music. I remember listening to that. It was worth the wait. I'm super happy that I waited because it sounded so good and it sounded so good for the first time. Granted, you hear the 
Batman theme. I think it was the Batman theme in the trailers. It's really similar to Something in the Way by Nirvana. It's very, it's got a very similar tune to that song, which they probably did on purpose. So you don't really notice it in the trailers. You just think it's like an orchestral version of that song. At least I did. But yeah, it sounds amazing. I'm definitely looking it up now. And that's why I wait for the movie so I can look it up afterwards and remember the beauty of the film that I watched and enjoyed. And yet again, I went extremely off track. So I'm going to get back on track. One last note, the runtime. Two hours and 55 minutes is a heck of a long runtime. Did it bother me any? No, no, I didn't feel it one bit. I checked my watch once, but that is because I ordered that monster of a drink. And I was like, I do not want to go through that thing and then have to pee halfway through a three hour film or even worse a quarter of the way through not gonna happen so i checked my watch once just to see what the time was and see how far along we were but it was not a pacing issue i was never bored in this movie i was always on board i was always intrigued things moved along nicely with very well done pace i think it was necessary because there is kind of a lot going on specifically with the mystery aspect and i think it really allowed matt reeves to flesh out everything that was happening with the criminal underworld and the politics and and the Wayne family and just everything and not not to mention the Riddler's victims and Batman and Gordon trying to find Riddler and, and prevent all this chaos from continuing developing Batman as a character. I think it was a necessary runtime. I don't think it was wasted. I will say the first half hour maybe was probably the slowest, but even then it was all built up. It was all laying the groundwork, getting us prepared, introducing us to people, and it was perfectly worth it. Cannot forget to mention the Batmobile. That thing is wicked. The first scene, Matt Reeves, man. He, he just, this whole movie, the introductions for all of this movie was great. Batman especially, but the Batmobile introduction, that scene was so, so awesome. I mean, that's pretty much all I have to say about it, but it, it was. The thing is, though, is I, I really like cars and I like muscle cars and it's basically a muscle car on steroids, essentially. Yeah, that, that introductory scene. Whew, that chase, too. Again, Matt Reeves' direction, just basically the Batman was awesome. It was dark, it was gritty, it had that Arkham vibe to it. Robert Pattinson, just, he did awesome in the role, I thought. He worked well with all the other actors, all the other, everyone else that showed up on screen just brought their A game. The action was awesome, the mystery was awesome. The, this is one of the few times whenever the action in a comic book movie is not the top of the list for me. The mystery, the thriller aspect of this film with the Riddler, that is at the top of the list and it was done so well. So yeah, this movie, it knocked it out of the park. But yeah, that's pretty much it for my review of The Batman. Those are my thoughts, but now it's your turn. What did you think of The Batman? Put it in the comments below. And while you're scrolling, if you enjoyed this video, consider leaving it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you want to see more like it. But most importantly, thank you for watching and most, most importantly, have a great day. And most, most, most importantly, vengeance.